I V M Those were some poorly imitated car sounds but if you're more into the real thing if you like cars bikes or anything with gears and motors or rotors you should check out the Rotomart podcast where Sanjeev and Tushar discuss the happenings in the world of auto mobiles Greetings, welcome to the Geek Food Podcast. My name is Dinkar. With me today are special guests Siddhant. Say hello, Siddhant. Hello. And Naveen Narona. Say hello, Naveen Narona. Hi, hi. I don't think we're special anymore. We've been around. Yeah, yeah I mean, you yeah. guys used to be special to me, but now you're we're just, here. Just, you're just we, here. We're just here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you guys are here along with me because we are talking about a series that was recently adapted to a Netflix movie, and it's a pretty uh, legendary. Is legendary a yeah, stretch? I yeah, think for so. For the series. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so Death Note recently came out as a Netflix movie, yeah. and uh, it's been a widely, highly regarded uh, anime and manga in. Japan. Yeah, yeah, actually worldwide, you know. I mean, the, worldwide, the, the, actually, the thing yes. with this show is um it's one of those few that crossed over at the right time, mm. like mid 2000s, mm-hmm. and that's when the when anime started to bleed into American uh, uh TV shows and things like that. So Toonami and Adult Swim and stuff like that was starting to take these shows in and translate them into english and death note was one of them that made the crossover and it wasn't that sort of lowest common denominator kind of you know the fun it surpasses is basically uh, it's a very yeah uh, it's not some fun robot action yeah. Yeah. you know not uh, cowboy bebop type exactly thing. exactly <laughs> it, it, it's uh, so you know they have these like classifications for manga in japan right, right. there's girls manga boys manga teenage manga teenage boys manga and then adult manga men and women So most of the shows that came in were like teenage boy manga and this was sort of that crossover show where you're like getting into adult manga now. It's hmm. teenage manga but with like a dark edge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's, it's a, like it's like the one where you're this is your training bra of like <laughs> to, of, to, adult uh, of, ad, of adult teams, yeah. Yeah, because it's a pretty dark theme. It is. Uh, Death Note is basically about a kid called uh, Light, Light Yagami, Yagami. Yeah. 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 yeah, who finds a notebook into which he can write a name and as long as he knows the face of the person whose name he's written that person is dead yeah. yeah so he has to like write the person's name down and he if he can picture their face while he writes it down they will die within 40 minutes of a heart attack if he doesn't specify the cause, cause of death yeah. oh is it 40 minutes 40 minutes it's yeah it's two days in the movie right no 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 that, that that's the thing so okay. uh, there's a whole bunch of rules and we're not going to go over all of them yeah. but the three basic ones are uh you can uh, write someone's name down if you don't specify how they die they die from a heart attack mm-hmm. uh, if you write someone's name down and say they die from and don't specify quite yet you have another hour before they die of a heart attack so it's an hour and 40 okay and if you specify that then that's how they they will die um and then the third thing is you can tell someone's death in advance so you can put a date and a time and that person will die at that time it's like a google calendar for, it, for death, death. <laughs> exactly and one last one uh, if the person is physically not capable of finding a way to die that way or if you don't know and they don't know how to be killed in that certain fashion like you can't have like a asteroid come down and kill this person or something it's, right. it has to be yeah. boss conceivable in a way uh, okay. again that's a very murky thing but i guess they wanted to not make it like this guy is some kind of god right. himself so uh, so a very final destination that awaits you exactly <laughs> yeah you'll die because some uh, chipmunk will like crawl into your brain and eat you alive or something oh, so i don't they'll know they'll come up with a new way to kill you yeah. if the written way is not possible no they you'll have a heart attack but okay. you, they, you can't send someone into some place they've never been or they can't get to and have them killed that way so oh, okay. uh, or you can't do stuff like he's in uh, J- tokyo japan right now get him across to turkey in an hour and then have him like execute some other guy there and then die kill himself like he can't okay. do that he can't go to turkey in an hour so he'll just die of heart attack Right. So that's the the final rule basically. The final rule that sort of makes sense for us. There's right. like a whole bunch of other ones which will It's death but practical. Yeah. Yes. 
and yes and it's handled by death gods and yeah. a yes. guardian of the death yeah, so they basically drop it in the human world and one of those who we get introduced to in the show in the first few episodes itself is uh, Ryuk, Ryuk yeah. who drops the book down because he's bored in yeah. the, in the yeah. realm yeah. of dead gods yeah. I love so, that explanation of yeah. like why did you I was, I was bored, bored yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he just drops it and like uh, he gives it to a bunch of people before it comes to light yeah. right. and what we see through the show is that a lot of people have taken the death note and not done a good job of it people use it for personal vendetta for like doing or jobs and stuff like that yeah. but Light is the first one who decides to you know conk off murderers yeah. and now starts going into like proper yeah. police archives so, and everything so, so Light the, the whole thing that's amazing about this is pretty early on first episode or even first 15 minutes in the movie as well you learn that uh, this book is extremely dangerous and it, it can like the power you have is quite amazing hmm. and uh, the twist is really that this kid is he immediately wants to be the savior of the world. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I will destroy crime and evil and put fear into the hearts of the evil doers and reshape society and be their sort of savior. And that is ridiculous. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, normally in most movies or most sort of things with this arc, even Lord of the Rings and shit, you get like, you get someone who does it and gets this immense power and uses it like, sloppily or tries to like Naveen said further their personal agenda or yeah. things like that but here immediately this book has reached the perfect person in some senses who's yeah. going to come down on all crime basically he's gonna go Dexter he is and in a better way yeah you know but so what's most beautiful about the show in general is that it changes genres every episode okay. yeah it's like for for one it's like a you know mystical dead god talking to human kind of episode next thing you know l is on the uh, on the case l is the guy who's basically yes. the antagonist so, or so the why don't you tell them a little bit about l i think that's a yeah so l is actually the the creators sugumi oba's uh, alter ego sort of like because he's also okay. very uh, he's got a pen name that is sugumi oba is his pen name and uh, he basically Devise a character to be the uh, other side of light, right? Whereas he's as smart as him, but he can't crack who this person is because he doesn't assume that this kid is the one. Yeah, and yeah. and L's origin is superbly Japanese anime, like yeah. and okay. manga. It's, what it's, is his origin? So basically, he is this guy who doesn't have his identity revealed, so that he can sort of crack these crimes that uh, no intelligence agency in the world can crack. So he's like yeah. Sherlock Holmes into 50. Okay. Like he is a super, super sleuth. And he doesn't show himself. He's revealed to the world through his, uh, well, agent Watari. Yeah. Like he basically sort of uh, keeps the world in what L's doing and what his thinking is because no one gets to talk to him or see him directly. He talks through a laptop essentially. He talks yeah. through a laptop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Correct. And his voice is scrambled and what have you. And Watari is the keeper of this thing. And in Watari is like backstories of not known or any of this stuff. Hmm. So uh, he's this very shadowy but uh, benevolent figure. And uh, the movie and the, the series take different ways of approaching this which we'll I'm sure discuss. But L is the ultimate counterbalance to uh, light yeah. and and the death note because that's when the game really kicks in because now yeah. you know that this guy because you think that okay now he's got the book he's gonna just kill people off yeah. and you're gonna see that part of his life you know and yeah. like regular people will be like oh dude has a book he can just write people's names and they'll die what police force yeah. is gonna stop him or what what's who's gonna stop him because mm. the rest of the world isn't there are no powers no gods Correct. no nothing so how's this gonna work and uh, the creators of the show are like well we've got this other character who's yeah. going to torment him mentally exactly. The beautiful thing is like In the show They'll do things like For example The first time L addresses the fact That there's a killer out there Called Kira He goes out And says that I am L And my full name is so and so And uh, like <coughs> Come and get me So basically Light is like Okay now this guy uh, Is going to find me So I'm going to write his name And he's going to be dead hmm. But L sends somebody else In his place Yeah Who's, who's actually who's convicted a murderer. M- Puppet mouthpiece type character Yeah, yeah. Mm. And he only broadcasts this, The press conference Is in Japan itself right. So he's like From the entire world Now I know you're in Japan So I'm going to come for you So like with every episode This yeah. tension builds up With like him trying so, to Cat and mouse Cat and mouse Yeah nice. so that's the thing It's like He uses deduction In an extreme way To sort of narrow it down And he's he's not afraid To toe the line and and obviously light was 
really really upset yeah. yeah so until that point he's like i'm a righteous guy i'm going to yeah. conquer of dead people like good bad people but then after that he's like okay now i have to really like save my ass so he yeah. just starts killing innocent people and and the first crack starts to show yeah, because uh, This guy, he might be a criminal, the guy who ultimately died. Right. But uh, Kira was willing to kill a totally innocent person who's not a criminal. Just yeah. to protect himself. So, and the public is seeing all this. So, some people are like, whoa, that guy wasn't a criminal. Yeah, because Kira was kind of being hailed as a hero. Yeah. And yeah. then they realize yeah. he's, yeah. Not, he's not all he, that. Maybe. Some people are like, it's still worth it. Right. right and that's the beauty of it so it's a very it's a psychological battle between two people and their personalities and the public swaying between it because hmm. you have this guy who's so self righteous who thinks he's morally superior with this literal deus ex machina hmm. okay and that he's going to fix everything but he's a bad loser he's impulsive he's so yeah and and yeah. he might be brilliant but he has all these trigger points which this other guy loves to push and sort of tries to find yeah. where he's going to uh, sort of plot him on a grid like where am i going to find him next and it's just a game of one up spinship and large scale chess mental chess between the two of them and that's the beauty of it man like yeah. that's why you just want to watch more of this and like as we said like there's a lot of people who follow him even after the whole debacle happens like yeah. the more and more el exposes uh, light and kira's motives A lot of people start believing that he's a bad guy, but mm-hmm. a lot of people still follow him, and that happens till the end of the show. Yeah, like till the very end, until Light's uh, eventual reckoning happens. There's like people who are still following him to the whole thing, and people you would believe even now if you look at the world right now, you're like, that's possible. It's, it is possible. Yeah. People can form cults. And the other thing that we should touch upon before we move on to the movie is Ryuk himself. Yeah. yeah. So in the show, he is a very passive personality who Mischievous. is they they briefly show the death god's world where it's just sort of barren wasteland where these other deities just hang around and laugh and like play dice or something still the toxic world from rick and morty yeah they <laughs> have, they have nothing going on you know right. so uh, ryuk is like you can see him being bored here and he's like i don't need this i'm going to drop my death note because it's his death note he yeah. is the one his he is killing these people and he explains his power is like every time i kill somebody I add the years they had left to my life span that's my power hmm. as the death god and I can see how and when everyone's going to die because I have the eyes of a death god so when I look at you I can see your name and I can see uh how many years you have left to live and if I wanted to I can kill anybody any time because whenever I look over them think of it as like a heads up display like right. every time you look at somebody you know what their name is and how yeah, they're going to yeah, die yeah. which is what you don't have in the in the, uh, the death note yeah. uh, no no in the death note itself even if you have the death note you don't know everybody's names if you yeah. just yeah. look at them but you can get shirigami eyes as a yeah. user who writes yeah. some books so shirigami eyes is half your life. death death right. user death god's eyes so ryuk is like you know i'm not on your side i'm not on el's side i'm not on anybody's side i'm just here to watch the old burn yeah, joker style he's, he's just and legend like the, of the chaos. he says in the movie yeah. at the end he says in the very beginning that humans are so interesting and that's yeah. like just a creepy and he's like you know? i got a deal for you it's the same deal for everybody you give me half your life force i'll give you death god eyes yeah. so you can get that heads up display see everybody's names and use that power against them and he is ever present in light's life so uh, he's always right next to him and only light can see him whoever touches the death note is the only he's one, the only one who can see you him. can see the death god so he's there all the time so you have scenes where light is with other people chilling having fun talking doing whatever and then ryuk is just standing right there he's eating an apple just like and light knows like light knows he's there so mm. it's ultimately freakish yeah but the real monster is still light like yeah, you know is. ryuk is doing nothing yeah he, he's, he's, he's just, just a there. tool he's, he's just there, there. Yeah. to play with and now yeah. he's doing it this is so. this is his reality show ryuk's like made his own reality show and he's just watching like he's got a 24 hour feed <laughs> so he's standing there and watching the whole thing unfold and from his like second person point of view so it's great for him but uh, light has to live with an actual death god always in his periphery yeah, yeah. and like get tempted into these little deals and get have to be reminded that is he with me is he telling me for my own good or does he have some nefarious scheme later yeah and um we'll see how that plays out in the movie as well so yeah. Uh I think uh, we should get into the movie real quick. Yes, let's do that. Let's get into, into the reading. movie. So now everybody has uh, a context of what we're going to talk about. Yeah. So let's take a small break and we'll be back. I'm sorry to cover from it Dinkar. No, I I'll <laughs> do it now. Let's take a small break because I said so and not Naveen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you after this. 
in a world where people are busy playing mendicant at Diwali parties. Two men decide to go all in in the river. Uh, don't you mean on the river? On the river. Oh yeah. Two men will go where no one has ever gone before to a studio with no air conditioning or Coke Zero to talk about poker. Hey, order lo na yar koi kya hai bakwas. The SpartanPoker.com presents Mera Kaam Poker, hosted by Azim Banatwala, the best comedian in the world, according to himself, and Peter Abraham, not related to John. New episodes out every Wednesday on the IBM Podcast app or any other podcasting app you use. And for all our listeners who want to try out their hand at poker, you can log on to thespartanpoker.com, register yourself as a user with the promo code IBM. And you will get 200 bonus cash, which you can use to play poker for free. See you at the tables. Welcome back to Geek Food. We are talking about Death Note. So, so far we've kind of set up the premise of the series, which is really interesting. Not just because there is a Death Note which can uh, kill anyone whose name you put into it, but like you guys were explaining, this whole uh, cat and mouse game between L and Light is really what uh, elevates the series. It takes it from teenage manga, like you were saying, to adult manga yeah. because yeah. it's not like L uh, Light is a superhero who's gotten like a power and now he's doing good because. He's a great character, mm. and uh, like the public is getting swayed in the show, I can see the audience also getting swayed because, uh, like, he's an anti-hero. He's in the process of Breaking Bad, really. So you are switching allegiances, yeah. And uh, that's kind of what they try to bring out in the movie. Uh, But uh, before yeah. we get into that, yeah, explain uh, how the series evolves to us a bit. Yeah, so uh, midway through the show, we have another character introduced, who's Misa Mi. Mm-hmm. Basically, she's a pop star, pop icon. Like p- people know her, of and course. she's a famous personality. She's in Japan. Yeah. yeah, but she also has another death note. Like because the whole realm has many gods, another one of them drops another book, and uh, Misa gets it, and she is a light admirer. Like how she adores him. She she thinks of him as the god, the ultimate god, and she will do anything to be ar- alongside. Him, okay, but in the whole bargain, light is like I don't want this chick. I don't. I'm not in love with her. But because she has that note, maybe I can use her to my advantage. Oh. So somewhere on the middle, there's a point where like L comes very close to finding because Misa is not a mouth that shuts up. So he comes very close to cracking her as a as a that note holder. So light also has to play a game for two episodes. Then we as the audience don't know what's happening. Yeah, we are as clueless as everybody else on the show. The characters are as clueless as you. Mm. And basically, light is kind of like he's a sinister mastermind. He's building an old. He's preempting what's going to happen. He's mm. a bloodless guy, man. He's, a, he's, a he, he's just vindictive. he's he's doing. He's like a topper in school, yeah. and he goes and he does all his schoolwork, and every other moment in his life is just him killing people. Like the cops narrow him down, like within yeah. like two three days. So they're like, if if the person has records of police arrests, yeah. then it's probably connected to the cops. And light's father is a cop in the show as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. So, and he's so in the, they, they manga is his, the chief of police. His room, and this guy's figured out how somebody must have bugged his room. Like from the very moment he opens his own door, see, so he knows that he's done all these small-time safety measures to make sure nobody enters his room. Right. And when he goes inside the room, the whole night he's doing his homework, but inside a packet of chips, he's kept like a device which can show him who's the criminal right now that's supposed to be conked off. So to everybody else, it seems like he's just doing his homework, but he's killing off criminals on the side. So that's how vindictive light is. At and the same time, L has figured stuff out all the time, and and light. Doesn't know what L knows because yeah. he already L suspects him and kind of knows that this guy is Kira. It has to be. He has to be the guy, but I can't prove, prove it. it. And my main ally is the chief of police, who is his dad, yeah. who's never going to let anything happen yeah. to his son. Oh, so in the show, does yeah. uh, Light's dad know that he's Kira? No, 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 oh, not okay. at all. He he obviously is perturbed by the fact that his son is even uh, sort of suspected. Right. So uh, so again, like Spoiler. while while we Spoiler. do all this stuff, while we do all this summary. Of the story, it's like twenty percent of what makes the show good because the story is really not important. It's all these reveals, yeah. how they use storytelling and sort of scene and like they spread the scenes out in such a way and how they disclose motivations that makes the manga great. And I think this is a great also point to sort of now bring the movie in because then it will sort of explain 
some of the problems I guess Naveen and I mm. had it with it as people who watched it and then we can talk about uh, how you felt as someone who's just seen this franchise for the first time yeah as someone coming into Death Note without any knowledge of the series yeah uh, I thought this movie was a mess yeah so, okay. and we, we, we concur I'm <laughs> yeah. sure yeah oh my god what I'll a be, bad okay, movie uh, Castle on the Table I didn't mind it so much it I was, didn't mind it, was it either it decent yeah. watch like two hours I could Sit in front of it, laptop and watch it. Yeah, but problems are uh, galore, like yeah. all over the yeah. place. So yeah. perhaps my expectations were high because uh, so I haven't seen Death Note the series, but yeah. I, I've always had like a peripheral awareness of it because it's like it's a pretty highly regarded series. So is, I knew yeah. the concept generally of the Death Note, and I'd heard a bunch about the series. So when it finally got adapted, and it's an adaptation that's taken a while coming before Netflix. Uh, yeah. it was kind of hanging in the air for a bit, and Shane Black was supposed to direct it at yeah. one point, which could have been. Interesting. Interesting, uh, but instead, about sometime a year and a half back, Netflix picked it up, and uh, it premiered a few weeks back as a Netflix movie. Yeah. So this movie essentially deals with uh, Light finding the Death Note, and uh, what I'm guessing is the first major arc of the series before the second Death Note comes in. Uh, so I think they didn't even bother. Yeah. They didn't even bother. They just went on their own tangent and uh, made their own story up. So it's not uh, directly adapted from the series. I really, I think they've only taken the device and right. the character names and Ryuk basically and yeah, adapted and it to America. Whole mess. So basically, as we said, we explained the rules in the first half of the show itself. Yeah. Uh, to give the idea that he's not ultimately God, he has to play by the rules. Yeah. But in the movie, they've given him the power to control like where he goes. Yeah. And what they do this and how the book will like. He's mind pages. controlling them through the yeah. book, which is yeah. just yeah. not done. You can't f- around with the rules like that. Yeah, yeah, the Death Note in the movie becomes a anything device. It's yeah. like it's yeah. a deus ex machina <laughs> yeah. to like an extreme e- level. Extreme level. He can write down like I am going into the store. The guy is going to hand me a bunch of chips for free. Yeah. Oh, and then he kills himself. Exactly. Yeah. He just adds in the kills himself at the <laughs> end to kind of follow the rules. Yeah. But yeah. everything else, he can do anything he wants. Exactly. The like guy wearing shit pages are floating in the air. Yeah. yeah. That, what, that what was doing? that was okay. So I mean, we did skip to the end here, but basically, <laughs> yeah. the, the, that's, the, that's that, where the problem lies. They the tried to explain lies. it up front, saying, "Okay, this is a universe where yeah. this is possible." So now, just like remember that, and then come to the end, and we'll explain that. Yeah. But, hey, no, just do the proper thing. No. You yeah. have a great You have a source of information That is so strong yeah. You have 37 episodes Of great anime Why would it sound like that And I you've also no got uh, They've also set up A light type character And they've set up An L type character yeah, They haven't set up A light and L Yeah they, they, You know they, had, they could have done that They could have just Gone ahead And made light Sort of a vindictive person But still Trying to show His morality As the way you know, mm-hmm. his way of d- sort of doing things. And mm-hmm. you have L sort of... Th- I like L's explanation in this. I like the uh, origin story for yeah, him here. Like, sort of, they've made him this... They've identified child geniuses and sort of trained them to be these super sleuths and crime solvers and, and stuff like that. I think that's a very good, believable way in the 21st century for us, the worldwide audience, to understand it. Because we're not going to get this sort of crazy Japanese... Uh, Cold-blooded yeah. Genius mentality Right uh, I think there's a Totally different Cultural background For those characters there But uh, So they have These two characters And they just Decide to turn them Into teenagers Immediately So they give them A brief moment of They're both very smart boys Yeah Very, very Much but smarter than The average light teenager Light not so much I hated light in this Because yeah, he's, yeah. he's a Paranoid dumbass But, but the thing is they, they, they gave him a moment yeah. Where they're like He gets it yeah. And we're like Oh okay So he does get it And and, and, and someone who's seen the show Like okay Maybe there's hope yet Yeah, yeah. And like any teenage boy he falls for the poontang. Yeah. yeah. And then it just crumbles after that. His resistance, his uh, single-mindedness, his uh, resourcefulness, his thought, his strategy is all dictated by Mia, effectively. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, and he becomes his own voice of conscience. And she and, the, and Ryuk are sort of... Ryuk is actually... He, he knows that he's, she's going to sort of take over at some point. Yeah. yeah. So he's guiding him towards yeah. getting it done. But then Ryuk, as we establish again, is a very neutral dead god. He's just like, somebody has to die. I have to get the age of their, that person. Yeah. I, I don't want to pull calls. But here he's just like, okay, you should do this and you should do that. I'll sit on your head and tell you this. And this guy is going paranoid. He's like, oh my God, people are going to find out. That was never light. Like yeah. until like the 30th episode, he's just like, I'm going to act smart and cool about it. But I'm not scared of any of these because I'm the smartest 
house. Yeah. He knows that for a fact. He it, really does. And he shows it time and time again. He one-ups L. And that game of chess is the most interesting thing in the show. L in this is... Again, it starts out so promisingly. Like you mm-hmm. have a character who has clearly got affectations and tics and a kind of a way of doing things. But within a few scenes of uh, being found out by light, he devolves into a petty child, yeah. Yeah. you know? And you're like, what is wrong with you? You're like, I've seen you for 20 minutes now and I know you're better than this. Like you're a smart guy, right? Why are you falling for these basic traps? Mm. Why are you getting emotional now? You know, and that's so putting off. I watched this. Uh, I mean, the emotionality in the movie is a real big problem. Like it really comes in between what makes the show compelling and interesting. And it was illustrated to me perfectly by this one video tweet that I saw mm-hmm. uh, that someone had embedded the difference between Netflix uh, Death Note and the original series. So they show the part, the reveal when Ryuk shows up in the in the manga and Light is like, oh, my God. And he like falls down and, and he's he's paralyzed by fear. Like, oh my, wh- what am I going to do? And then he says, oh, you're a death god. That's, it's a death note. So are you here to kill to me? Research, yes. yeah. And he's like, no, you, you own the death note. And then it just, life continues. Right. In the movie, Ryuk shows up and is like brimstone, thunder and storms. <laughs> and light is flipping out, screaming like a... Like howling, like a, howling like a bitch. Like yeah. a really stupid character. Like, it was so sad to watch. I was, yeah, I started was, laughing. Like, yeah. I was like, this is comical. Like, and he's just wailing away and trying to open the door and run away and it's just horrible. Like, it's, it's so... F- it's just so sad. It's terribly written and it's terribly acted. Yeah, the actors that are That entire part actor is very so bad. bad. That, that lead actor yeah, is a disaster. Even the girl was really poor. The girl like, was okay. Like, she did whatever she could do with that role. I guess. She's anyways kind of getting second guess throughout the movie. Yeah. But, uh, like, my main... Uh, okay, let's talk about some good things also. I yeah, think. yeah. Okay. I liked much. the dad. The dad was good. Yeah, the whole, he was the whole good. arc about his uh, ex-wife yeah. and everything was pretty nice. And he figured stuff out pretty pretty quickly. Yeah. You yeah. know, he had more agency than I think the anime. That's one uh, thing I always felt with the cartoon. Uh, yeah. Dad was like, he was too dumb. He was for, really for, dumb. For us police for, superintendent, he's yeah. just like too dumb. His own son is the killer. And he can't yeah, he can't figure it out. But this guy, he gets it. Like, and he put two and two together right at the end. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, yeah. okay, you also, gotta tell me. I think you know? it's very well shot. Uh, Adam Winger has like a history of directing scenes that are beautifully shot. Yeah. So even that whole FBI uh, scene where like all those cops who are on the case and, uh, just go yeah. climb up a building and jump off it. I think it was beautifully that shot. That was yeah. probably the best moment of the movie for yeah, me. It, yeah. it was, it came out of nowhere. It was dramatic and it looked great. So the visuals are set up in a really interesting way. I think what really, really let this movie down is just a terrible script. Yeah. The, Ca- the characters of L and uh, Light, which the way you describe the series, sounds so nuanced and interesting and there's layers to them. Yeah. Here they're just cardboard cutouts. They really are. I mean, the, the thing is they also build so beautifully because they have these little showdowns between each other. Because again, uh, Light and L then meet in person. Right. And and they don't tell each other anything. Like they they uh, they both know that they, one is the other. But they don't, again, Light doesn't have the critical, uh, what do you call it, information about how to kill L because he doesn't have his name. exact name. Yeah. And and L doesn't have the real proof and can't remove the shield of Light's dad to catch Light. So they meet, they play a tennis match against each other. What? They, there's all kinds of like... <laughs> and literal... they exposition each to the game, like just like yeah. one shot, exposition like yeah. and then other shot. Yeah. Oh, you think I'm going to lose because I, you think I'm going to not give up because I'm a sore loser and take losing badly. But if I actually throw the game, you'll know that I'm overcompensating. So you can't catch me through this. I'm just going to play. Yeah, mind games. Through. Yeah. This is, and Ryuk is just like hanging around and watching the tennis match. Ryuk is just watching the tennis match. <laughs> to him, it's Wimbledon. Like, yeah. he doesn't care, right? He's like the referee over there just like looking from one side to the other as the ball is passed. <laughs> so Ryuk is an all-powerful death guard who basically went like, hey... What if I just watch Real Housewives? <laughs> uh, real, real, real serial killers of Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and like most of the, like, again, because that note is such a serious show, the series does not have a lot of light moments. It doesn't yeah. have like characters going, ah, and like the uh, no, there's right no, there's no funny minutes. But then like Ryu the gives some kind of sense of, uh, you know, respite in the show to his character because he's a very, 
outlandish character in the first place but you can also laugh about it like he's okay laughing about simple things yeah. but here they made him so menacing and and villain defying throughout yeah. that it's like i don't like him now i just like okay he's a lurking character in the background yeah and it's freaking willem defo we're yeah. going to get into this movie a little more yeah. i'm going to like explain why it didn't make any sense to me after this break long long ago not in bethlehem but in a place nearby There was a wonderful birth of a huge show which I like to call Cyrus says a show that encapsulates everything in human history from the first homo sapien to the last homo sapien uh, who's traversed the entire world and then come back to India this is a show which tells you everything about everything if you want to know avoid google come to us it's called Cyrus says get new episodes every monday on the IVM podcast app or wherever you get your podcast on you get one banana water free with every podcast right i'll just check that i'll just check that Welcome back to the Geek Food podcast. We are about to begin a process of surgically ripping apart the Netflix adaptation of Death Note because man, I thought this movie was terrible. Like I said, I came into it with no expect I mean high expectations actually, but yeah. no idea of what it would turn out to be. Now, within the first 12 minutes, I realized how terrible it was going to be. Yeah. Because The entire setup of the movie is just so bad. It begins with us meeting Light who goes from Light Yagami to Light Turner by the yeah, way, Turner, which is yeah. like the most generic yet terrible name you could come up I with. I guess. I mean Light Turner. Like it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Forget it's that. Fine. Yes, and it was whitewashed. But anyway, you meet this guy who is like he's set up as a stereotypical nerd in the most ridiculous fashion possible. Yeah. <laughs> like when you think of like nerd in an 80s movie hmm. that's what this guy is he's like walking around with notebooks he's getting pushed around by the bully and all of this happens in 3 minutes so there's no effort to set up his character hmm. instead they're just using a bunch of clichés to go like okay he's getting pushed around by a bully so you know he's a nerd right and there's nothing too light other than the fact that he got beaten up by a bully once hmm. immediately after that he goes into a library where suddenly he finds the death note and there's like thunder and rainstorms and a voice comes out of nowhere and this evil groot looking thing pops out yeah, and, and in willem defoe's voice says sup i'm ryuk yeah. <laughs> which is all of this has happened in 7 minutes with zero context essentially yeah. Yeah. and at that point i was like oh no this is going to be a bad movie it feels like problem is world building like the, exactly. the, the series opens with the death world itself like the realm of the gods and they all bowl and sitting over then we get to look at their world to understand why it makes sense for the human world to be more interesting right we have none of that we have no background into what their life is in the other realm because as much as it's a thriller it's a mystical kind of element to it there's there's nothing that really goes well with it because right. he reads out about the death note gods and everything after was after he's yeah. done like getting it, the and that's so late in the game i mean he realizes it's sort of an eastern thing like almost before the last arc begins of the movie the last act shall yeah. i say um but uh as soon as he gets it the first thing he does is he kills a bully yeah and Which you're like also really was a terrible sequence was, because I, again this happened like within 7 minutes of the movie yeah. where ryuk is like hey why don't you try and kill that guy put his name down see what happens yeah, and so the most what, final the, destination possible death happens. immediately you lose legitimacy exactly because uh, the death note the character of light is supposed to be somebody who kills off like double murderers who are uh, out on bail or whatever like all these terrible criminals who are who need to be punished is is that's that's his mo why is he killing a bully that's juvenile like that's the definition of juvenile yeah. like you you take a really powerful thing and you satisfy this one personal vendetta that you have and the funny part is throughout the movie they don't reference to that bully's death as the first death yeah they keep calling the other guy who was murdering his wife and children like yeah. the, they call the, that the first death yeah, yeah. and like they just forgotten i'm like he so, killed an innocent person right at the start yeah yeah, this, yeah. and that's that's beta that. testing like screw that doesn't yeah, matter yeah. brains were on the footpath dude yeah. yes. <laughs> they did not spare any expense to make it a really horrifying death and the Netflix. first death Which i actually enjoyed like yeah. i enjoy gore yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. no but i mean You know that's a pretty big statement to make for somebody who is just who yeah. beat up some a guy, guy who deserved it pretty much, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, because he's a dick. <laughs> yeah, this guy found the book, and the first thing he thought of was, "Hey, decapitation." Yeah. <laughs> so that's the problem. Like, you've met the guy, you know nothing about him other than the fact that he's set up as a nerd. I mean, he yeah. doesn't even seem like a nerd. You just know, like, oh, that's the thing that happens to nerds, and that's the thing that happened to him. Yeah. And the first thing he does is kill someone. Valuable enough to believe a dead god who said, "Ki ha, put his." Name, yeah, I'll die. I'm like cool. <laughs> I mean, so, if you're a genius, then think about it. Now, 
Exactly. Yeah. He's <laughs> either an, like he's an idiot or he's a dick and really he's a combination of both. Yeah. Because the very next scene, he meets this like stereotypical goth chick, like the yeah. kind who'd be like, oh, I like to watch flowers die. Because yeah. again, all cliches. He meets, he's like, he's sitting in the bleachers at a game. He sees her like sitting next to him and he goes like, oh, hey, by the way. Did you know I have a death note? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that is scene just, oh my was God. the worst. Why? Why would you do that? Worst. It's worst like, scene. what is happening? And because she's the girl, also creepy yeah. as hell. Because she's like, oh, so you're telling me that if you write a name down, you'll kill some somebody, will die. Oh, please. I have a I'll right only, <laughs> I'll only believe you if you show me. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's go kill someone. She's uh, also a just dick. to prove a she's, point. She reverse psychologies him into killing people, and then she's like, "All right, what are we gonna do?" And at that point, even Light is like, "We." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, "Yeah, what are we gonna do?" Because we're stuck watching the shitty movie now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then uh, obviously L comes into the picture. He's again like L's intro is good, and like that middle yeah. stretch of the movie once L pops up and that, it uh, actually gets good around that point. I have to say, good. yeah, and man, because a lot of synth music and a uh, lot of like neon yeah. lights are being used. Yeah, there. yeah sure. And I was surprised when I saw L because it's freaking Lucky Stanfield. Lucky Stanfield yeah. Who's that? Who he's the he's the stoner bro in Atlanta. Oh, okay, I haven't I haven't he's seen that show. He's Paperboy's homeboy. He's okay. also in Get Out. Okay, and he's also gets, in Get Out, yeah. yeah. And he's so good. Like in yeah. Atlanta, he's one of my favorite parts of the show. And I was like, "What are you doing here?" Which is also what I thought when I heard Willem Dafoe's voice. Yeah, but yeah. Well, Netflix has money, I guess. I guess, yeah. No, I mean, and that's the cool bit. You do the get to VO see a little bit. Yeah, the view is of the of the characters. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you it's get, you, then you get to see a little bit of the play, like but between Zach, the two. I do not understand why they had to CGI the character. Just put Willem Dafoe in a body costume because they didn't pay him enough. I he suppose. looks like a Ryuk already. Like uh, he, pretty much, he's halfway there. Yeah, he's halfway it's there. True, yeah. Just yeah. put a body costume on him. Willem Dafoe was like, "All right, how much is the paycheck?" Cool. I'm not turning up in the set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah. send me the movie. Yes. I'll dub my voice. And I think why he works great is this entire existential boredom that Ryuk has. He Willem Dafoe probably had it while, <laughs> while doing the video. Yeah, while so watching he's going this. Like, yeah. Humans are so interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, the other thing is generally you get, then you get to the part where it gets interesting, the cat and mouse game and all that. But you know what's annoying? They once again just resorted to. Uh, Call, uh, just montages Yeah Like uh, all these millions of Hundreds of deaths Don't matter The most <laughs> interesting part Of the movie Yeah They compress into a montage And then suddenly Take a left turn Into uh, Mia being An evil dick Yeah pretty much Which mm. again is like I mean you know Awful She just uses she's terrible, him But yeah. also what <laughs> Yeah it's just It's so random man Like You also realize Immediately that She's using him yeah. I mean from the get go Itself and then this whole teenage puppy dog love thing. I don't, you know what I don't understand? I think this is a clear cultural problem. Because in Japan, nerds are not hated, you know? Yeah. Nerds have their own status and culture. And they, and, and yeah. culture, and they, they get to be cool nerds or those... You know, the, the nerds that are hated are the ones that love anime so much. Yeah. The smart nerds do well and people respect them. Which is why Light is respected. He, he goes on dates and stuff. He's like... In, and to cover his tracks Yeah he's a complete baller Because he looks good And everything he's very suave, yeah. yeah So and he uses it To cover his tracks And, and do all that stuff Here This guy is a loser They put him in that character And they're like Teenagers are incapable Of doing anything But like getting affected By pheromones And wanting to have sex Like yeah who'll go to the prom With me That's yeah. a big concern That's all yeah. that matters yeah. At this, this point This like, is a legit Plot point in the movie yeah. By the way <laughs> Yeah <laughs> that note. Why do you want to Worry about a prom No he doesn't want to go But she just manipulates him within seconds like oh look at this message in a hat come on oh god uh, so uh, you know we're, we're just all scratching our heads just wondering why this is happening and then there's that chase sequence where somehow he has the lungs of Mo Farah you know <laughs> and he can run like the wind through any kind of obstacle and get chased by L and it's just so that sloppy. That entire last sequence is like, it's the cherry on top of the shit Sunday that was this movie. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad. We're going to spoil it completely because yeah. it deserves to be. Yeah. But man. You so what heard, happens in the end is uh, yeah. Misa, Mia obviously uh, has one of the pages and she's writing down. She's she like, I've written your name. She's like, written Light's name. And yeah. if I burn the paper, then you won't die. Yeah. But he's like, oh, I'm double crossing you because I already knew your intentions. But that's too late for Light's uh, you know, character to have any kind of glorification. As no, he yeah. didn't know. He got beat. Yeah, no, he but got he, no, beat. No, no. So he, 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 
and he did all of this at the computer for two minutes. He wrote everyone's names down to make his escape. Like yeah, yeah. suddenly, he has a burst of sheer genius. This which even the though anime light doesn't have that kind of foresight yeah, yeah. to sort of plot his entire escape and Mia's probable downfall. Yeah, like it's a perfect storm of exact events that so he's concocted. So what happens it. before you just get to that is. Uh, at this fair where the last sequence takes place at the top of a Ferris That's wheel really, yeah. uh, there's this very supposedly emotional sequence hmm. where Light tells Mia like screw all this let's get away and stuff and all you have to do is like let's get rid of the death note and uh, if you love me you won't do anything if you love like, me yeah. let's get away from all of this yeah. and Mia says cool cool then Light literally looks away like it's like he heard a bee or something so he turns to the left and from the right Mia grabs the book and he looks at her like Oh shit And, yeah, and she's like was, What happened It was a I'm so disappointed in you But now you're going to die Look yeah. <laughs> Like as best as it yeah. can be He's like Oh crap I wrote your name in the book In such a way That if you take the book from me You're gonna die And she's like I can't believe you And he's like, like I she, can't believe you She has you. the moment To have a huge bitch chief bitch fit yeah. Like, yeah. And I'm like you're gonna die. What is wrong with you? Like you know exactly. And the tropiest of them all tropes. She's dangling by one hand, and he yeah. has to reach out to her. But also at the same time, the but also she dies. She yeah. Also, yeah. And yeah. then the whole Ferris wheel falls down, and of course the paper floats gently. The one with, with his light name on it, which yeah. is supposed to be burnt, uh, floats, floats gently the into the into a fire. Yeah. And so this is supposedly the emotional peak of the movie. And right after this, they negate all of it. It was terribly set up anyway and yeah. we didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. But then they go ahead and explain, hey, even us, the guys writing the movie, didn't care about that entire emotional climax <laughs> yeah. sequence. Light's because alive. Because Light yeah. had all this written down already. He knew Mia was going to betray him. So he wrote down, Mia will betray me. Then she will take the book from me. Then she will fall to her death. In the meantime, the page with my name will rip apart and go and fall into a fire. Yeah. And then He's this, written everything. This doctor who has killed five patients or something is going to uh, revive me in the hospital and keep my identity safe. And uh, I'm going to be saved by some dude who molested five children from the water. Yeah, and he'll deliver the and book he'll, back to He'll give house. me the book later yeah. and, then he'll, and then he'll die. He outsourced. <laughs> The act of being Kira to someone for like two days just so he could have an alibi. Which yeah, yeah. He, he also put the all book. the yeah he put all the times of all the people that are going to die eventually, yeah. so that uh, people would not realize it was him. Which he does in the series as well, but he chooses his uh, next predecessor or the next successor rather mm-hmm. much smartly. Like you know, he knows that this guy will actually do a better job. He doesn't job. go like this guy. I saw on the news. Let's give him the book yeah. for two days. Because yeah. I didn't browse for two minutes on the and then and lab. then you're like, oh wow, great! But all of this is only being told to you. Because Light's dad figured this out anyway. Yeah. So all his master plan nonsense failed. You know, and the whole point of the conflict between Mia and Light was, you have to kill your dad. Which, and Light was like, yeah. obviously, no, I don't want to kill my dad. He's my dad. And Mia's like, but we have to. Yeah, th- and that again, was a, that was a good we, turn. They would know? have gone very well with yeah. that. Yeah. And then, like, you know, explored how she's a mental character and he still has some humanity left. Maybe that would have been the arc. But no, it's like, okay, now you said this about my father, you f off on my life, and then come back later when your the plot needs you to come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That amazing. entire last sequence where it turns out he's written everything down. First of all, what an amazing writer. Yeah, yeah. Figured <laughs> everything be, out. Yeah, he should be like, he's the George R. R. Martin of that world. <laughs> and like, I just expected him to go like, and then the credits started rolling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> because it is so bad. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, to sum it up. Also, let's not yeah, forget right. L this entire time. Is just crying like a girl, yeah, like, yeah. like a girl that had a dolly because, stolen from because her. Because he lost Watari, and Watari's full name is not Watari. Yeah, you can't kill him unless you know his surname as well. How yeah. did he just kill that? Because okay, I'm right, Watari, and then you're gonna die. They what? didn't follow their own rules exactly. that they set up at the start of the movie. Yeah. And that too, Mia kills Watari. Like, yeah. she's the most farthest person from knowing who's real identity because at least Light knows his father works with him so he can find Watari's actual identity. But how does Mia kill him without knowing the entire name? It's just it's, outlandish. And another, like, towards the end, I don't know if this makes sense because they don't explain the rule, but L finds the pages with, the, Be- uh, I, with everyone who's been killed. Because someone says calculus in some conversation and he stops a plane... Because uh, uh, I don't know how he managed to like get away with doing all the damage that he did as well. L, you know, chasing this guy, shooting people, all this stuff. And then he comes back off the runway because he remembers Mia saying calculus. Yeah. At some point and goes, that must be it. Calculus book. And then mm-hmm. goes through her stuff and finds it. Again, how does it all just work out so simply? Exactly. And then he's sitting there and he's about to write... 
Light's name and, and that's where it does ends. Does that work? Because at this point, they're just pages torn from the book. It's not the actual book. No, it's okay. It, you can, it's fine. Oh, yeah. You can you can take the in pages the series, out of the book. He actually has like a small square page which he keeps under his watch all the time. So in case he finds out else name, any time he'll write it down. Whoa! Like yeah. a small square that he always. Yeah, yeah that's kind of cool. Yeah. And there's one thing that he did was he found out that a bunch of FBI agents were searching for him and other people. So he got he got the name of one of them. And then wrote in the thing, Ray you will Parker. get on the Ray Pembo. Ray Pembo you will yeah. get on the train. You write down all the names on this sheet in this briefcase. Write down all the names in these squares, and then you get out of the train. And he gets out of the train. He dies, and all the names were on put onto the death note. So all of them died as well. All of them died as well. Mm. And so then he, after he dies, the girlfriend knew something about the case, so he has to persuade her to not go to the FBI office and tell them everything she knows. So he has to find her real name also because even she's using an alias. So the entire episode is just Light trying to walk alongside her and trying to persuade her to not disclose his identity because she doesn't know who he is. Right. But he knows who she is, and but he doesn't know who she is really. Like that's the level of. Complexity the show has, but then yeah, but all is lost. This is it's the thing. all gone. Like you can clearly see how the series has a lot of interesting setups, and the issue with this movie is it has zero setup, and it's it's like they went, oh, okay, here's a bullet list of things we should yeah, do, like, amazing twist, yeah, and all the nuance and feel of the movie, yeah, is because gone. again, it's culturally so different, and then they just. Try to copy paste the characters, and they don't stick, man. They yeah. don't stick the so same way. What do you feel like? Should should they stop just messing with anime in general because we've got Dragon Ball Probably, Z now? Probably because the yeah. Airbender as well. Just, Ghost in the Shell was no, a disaster just now. Because they, I think Ghost in the Shell was at least like moderately okay. I didn't watch it, so I can't comment on that. But what I'm saying basically is that if you are going to do this, try and find a cultural middle ground if possible, mm. or or just if you're going to really go for it, you can either take the you're not the, even the characters the just the bones, the, 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 the bones of the story and try and run with it yeah. because if you do anything else it's just going to come off as ham-fisted and and it will show like everyone will be able to see it because you won't connect with the new people who you're trying to bring in and you will certainly lose the people who already know about it yeah, and, because I understand and, the need for them to like also make yeah. sense with what they are trying to do for new audience sure but also because source material is so strong itself yeah. you don't have to work too hard to revamp it you just have to pay attention to the details of it and then you can create something nice out of it i think that's the issue they often with these adaptations end up in the middle where they're trying to have all these nods towards the original story and yet try and americanize it and they end up in the middle there's yeah. this great uh, nerd writer video on youtube where he explains why the ghost in the shell movie adaptation the skull johnson mm-hmm. one completely misses the point that they made in the ghost in the shell anime movie and it yeah. just explains how you kind of take the the bones of the story and the visuals included but kind of miss all the depth behind them correct so yeah, that's the issue with this. And I mean, we've proved it here. Naveen and I are at various. He's finished watching the anime. I'm halfway through. I've on, we've all seen the movie, but Dinkar has no idea about the rest of the anime. Hmm. And between the three of us, we have pretty much got the experience covered, and we've all come to the exact same conclusion. Yeah. And Dinkar didn't need the cultural backdrop or uh, any of the nuances of the show. So he hated it anyway, hmm. and we invested more time into the franchise, which we really didn't need to, and we can just have could have just stuck with the original and been happy with that anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I think I'll uh, go back and check out the anime because I feel like I mean after you guys have described it and from the concept, it's a yeah. good idea it's a great, and it's a great can show. be a great show. And the yeah. and the good thing is it's not too long. It's thirty nine episodes. You can just watch it in like a month. You know, not you, even I finish in the weekend. Like, yeah, yeah, but like we, there's so there's out. so many He's, things to watch. Yeah. I mean, I I've been knocking out two episodes uh, a day or so, and I'm uh, up to like number thirteen or so. And in, in a week, I've taken because out that so much. Flow, they flow so well into each other. Yeah, like, it's mm-hmm. a massive construct of a story. We just have to spend so much time. So yeah, it. I highly recommend anyone who watched the thing and found it disappointing to give the franchise a chance and watch the anime. Yeah, yeah. and there's some couple of Japanese movies which are very faithful to the original manga. And even that is good. Like the, the Ryuk animation is a little uh, hazy, but then otherwise yeah. the characters are pretty strong. So the Geek Fruit record for the episode is skip the Netflix movie, go watch the anime, and uh, oh, the to close. Move. I'd like to mention that Lakeith Stanfield is doing press because he's got like he's kind of a breakout star at this point after Get Out in Atlanta, okay. <laughs> and mm. he's just shitting on this movie everywhere. Oh, he hates he it. Is, he's yeah, <laughs> wow. like he's joking around about it. 
Because he he's like tweeting and stuff now and people ask him about it. He's like, yeah, it's going to be the worst movie of the year. I love it. So, <laughs> <laughs> is he being sarcastic or does he really believe that? I think he's just like, oh, I did the movie. Maybe what he's playing like? both sides. That's a great that's a great way to approach this. He's the L in yeah. real life. Yeah, he's killing it. Cool. That's it for Geek Fruit this week. That's I like our- his name. It's Stuckit Landfield. <laughs> 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 nice Okay Speaking of Twitter names We are signing off On Geek Fruit And you can talk to us uh, At Geek Fruit HQ On Twitter And the other social medias And you can talk to All of us individually Yes uh, Naveen What is your Twitter handle I'm no Rona No underscore Rona Siddhant Siddhant underscore Mehta I am Dinks Thinks And if you put those Twitter handles onto a death note Nothing will happen Yeah we know hey, my surname is there. Man. We we don't have a, we don't have enough followers to merit a death note. Yeah, and who cares? And who cares? <laughs> All right. So tell us what you think, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction, and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry. Food and drinks will be served shortly, and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.